So you've decided to get into City Skylines, but you're not quite sure what it's about or how to play longer than 10 minutes without running out of money and abandoning houses everywhere. You search YouTube and all you can find are advanced tips or most efficient starting designs, but those are above your level. You've come to the right spot, my friend. I will show you the actual basics. I will explain like you are five. This is part 3A. Hello world! Welcome to part 3 of my City Skylines for Dummies tutorial. This is the last part of a short series outlining the absolute basics of City Skylines. Today I will cover everything that you need to prepare your city for high density zoning and the trek to the final milestone, Megaopolis. If you are brand new to the game or want to start at the beginning, I highly suggest that you check out parts 1, 2A, and 2B. This is all vanilla, no mods, no assets. In part 2, we ended with the big town milestone and that is where we will pick up now. I think that's all that you need to know, so let's get into the game. Before we get into gameplay, we're going to go over four things. Let's do a vitals check first. We will do a quick recap of the milestones and how we've been getting through them. I will go over the new zones with you that we unlocked, the high density zones and what they all do. I'll give you two vital traffic tips to be able to handle high density and then we'll get into the gameplay. I'll be straightforward with you guys. It's been a while since I recorded parts 2A and 2B of this tutorial series, but I don't really remember where we left this city off. So when I do a vitals check, I open up this info views in the top left corner and I just click through each item and make sure that we're okay with where we are right now. To start, I will go with electricity and right off the hop, we need more electricity in the city. We're, we're sort of kind of surviving, but lucky you can see these guys. Let me just double check that I haven't messed with the electricity budget. No, everything's at 100% with the budgets. So this means we need a new electricity building. What do we have? We have geothermal. Geothermal is my favorite. And we have the solar updraft tower. These are coming from the Green Cities DLC, which is a great segue to me telling you that I will be playing the rest of this episode with the DLCs turned on. Part 2A, we did not have the DLCs turned on. Part 2B, we did. So you can see we've got some park life, a campus, and some industry over here. If you don't have the DLC that I'm using, just choose a different power option or a different option for whatever we're doing. I think you'll be okay either way. Now to choose between these two buildings, I don't really care about the cost to place the item. So this is 65 thou, this is 90 thou. What I do care about is the upkeep cost, which you can see here, and the power output, which you can see here. And doing the maths, Cost per output, the solar updraft tower is better. I'm gonna put it down and it should last us for a long while. Oh my goodness, and it fits so nicely here. But it does have an area of effect for noise and the houses that are nearby are going to be affected by that. Let's move it up to the industry area instead and it fits just fine there. And let's watch all of our power problems go away. Done. Money saving tip. See how we have way too much power for our current needs. We are going to go into the budget and we are going to lower our electricity budget down to let's say 70% first and see where that leaves us for electricity. Oh no, that's way too far. Let's go to like 86 and that's reasonable. So it's going to save us a small bit of money per week. And as we need more electricity going forward, we will just up our budget back to 100. Once I'm at 100, I will put down a new building if I need more power. Great, vitals check, step one, done. Let's check water. Water, we're fine. Look at my horrible piping. <laughs> it's only horrible because it's, it's visually ugly. Otherwise, it's working fine. If you care about the way that your pipes look, cool. If you don't, also cool. Just get everything covered. Garbage. Garbage is fine. All of these rows are green. Our landfill usage is pretty low. Our garbage processing status is at zero and that's because we just unlocked the incineration plant which processes garbage 
And because we are now using the DLCs, we have access to the recycling center as well. Both of these would work. The incineration plant creates pollution, but also outputs power. The recycling center does not output power, of course, but it creates much less pollution. For the sake of pollution and cost, upkeep cost, I'm going to place down the recycling center. If you don't have the Green Cities DLC, that's okay. You can use the incineration plant to get the same effect. Let's put down actually two of these. I will put this first one over here in our industry section. So that recycling center will start taking garbage that until now would have gone into these dumps and will start processing it. I'm going to do the same over here and maybe one day we can go fully green-ish. Done. Next vitals check, education. Ah, we're doing just fine for education. At the elementary level, we have capacity well over how many students we have eligible. In high school, exact same thing. And we just started our university in episode 2b of this so our university will grow with us as our city grows happiness i'm not concerned about with a vitals check Healthcare, i am concerned about all of our roads are colored green and our availability is fine moving to the death care tab our cemetery usage is getting pretty full it looks like we just have the one cemetery for the whole city we have not yet unlocked crematoriums they come with a later milestone to prepare for the future, why don't we put down another cemetery? I'm going to put it over this way. We're gonna kick a couple people out of their homes, but that's just how it's gotta be sometimes. Levels, wind, traffic, pollution, noise, I'm not concerned about in a vitals check. Fire safety, we look just fine for fire safety. All of our roads are green. Our hazard is pretty low. We'll put down more fire stations as we expand. I'm expecting a similar answer for crime. Yes, all of our roads are green, our jail availability is fine, and our crime rate is fine. When I'm checking on the vitals of my city, those are the only ones I go through. Electricity, water, garbage, education, healthcare, death care, fire, and police. Now I know at least my city is surviving for the next little while and we can move on. Now let's take a quick look at the milestones and review how we got here. In the first episode, I went over just the basics, the absolute bare bone basics to get you guys to Little Hamlet. In episodes 2A and 2B, we then went from Little Hamlet all the way through these milestones up to Big Town. And these milestones are where the crux of my lesson to you is. When you are starting a brand new city, and if you're struggling to get past Little Hamlet, you're going bankrupt or people are moving out or you're just having a hard time getting off your feet, here's the absolute basics. I will reiterate it again and we will be following this sort of mantra for today as well. Put down the necessary buildings as they are available to you. Place them slowly. Don't rush your building and then follow the needs or demands of your city until you reach the next milestone. So let's say we reach Little Hamlet, we look and we see, okay, we have now unlocked garbage, healthcare, and education. Those are all requirements for our citizens. I'm gonna place down one of each, and then I'm going to focus on zoning according to my demand until I get to Worthy Village. Then I'm introduced to fire and police. Those are requirements. Place down one of each, Maybe I'll tinker with some industry specializations as well. And then I'm going to zone according to my demands and needs until we get to Tiny Town. Do you see where I'm going with this? We've unlocked parks. Those are important. Put down a couple of those bad boys and follow my zoning needs until we reach Boomtown. So on and so on until you reach Big Town. And then you're here with me where we are at this current city. We have 9,300-ish people living here and we're going to move forward. With Big Town, we unlocked a new square that we can purchase. That's great to keep in mind. We unlocked campus stuff, but we already have a campus going. We unlocked some new transit options, a metro specifically, which we will get into later in the episode. And the most important, I would say, for Big Town is our high density zoning. If you've made it this far to Big Town and you have unlocked high density zoning, this is where you have the biggest opportunity to really mess up basically your traffic, which can mess up basically your whole city. We will focus on high density for a while and I will show you how not to get lost in the high density trap and let 
it and its traffic ruin your day. We've unlocked high density zoning, which is very exciting, but it's important to understand why we don't just spam high density everything everywhere. Let's look at this excerpt from the city's wiki and talk about the differences between the zoning types. Along with the traffic generated, the main difference between the high and low residential zones is that the people living in the high density buildings don't necessarily reproduce and increase the population, so a mix of high and low density makes sense if you want to continue to grow your city. Traffic generation with high density commercial can be significantly more than the low density. Low density commercial employs less educated sims, high density employs more sims with higher educations. The amount of goods that are sold also relates to the density. Low density, less goods sold. High density, more goods sold. Both industry and office zones employ your sims. Less educated sims work in the industry. More highly educated sims work in the offices. Industry zones also produce goods that need to be shipped to commercial zones and note that this produces a fair amount of traffic where the standard offices do not. IT offices produce goods for commercial zones, but they're shipped magically, meaning that they don't require trucks to transport these goods around the city. More realistically, they're the type of services that are provided over the internet. Finally, industry generally produces pollution and noise where offices do not. I've brought traffic up a few times and there's a reason for that. Quite often when folks hit the big town milestone, I see them just putting High density everywhere, high density all the things. I've even seen them completely dezone the low density and replace it all with high density. And you know, that's a thing that I guess you can do, but you're just inviting traffic problems. One of the biggest ways to fail with traffic is to start zoning all of your high density and not have your roads be ready for it. So while this will not be an in-depth traffic tutorial, I will teach you exactly two ways of preventing traffic problems. Thing number one is probably the easier concept of the two, and it's essentially get rid of your traffic lights. If we come down this road here, we start to see some traffic lights and these traffic lights are just going to cause people to stop when they don't need to. Same thing here, same thing over here and here. Too much stopping. We don't need this much stopping. They should be able to go, right? How do you take away traffic lights in vanilla? Let me show you. On the top left, info views. Then down near the bottom on the right side, it says traffic routes or traffic routes or traffic routes. Click on it and on the second tab, junctions, it'll show you in your city where you have traffic lights, where you have what in general. If you just click on the traffic light that's in the intersection that you are looking at, you'll see that it turns the traffic light on and off. So I've turned this traffic light off. There is now currently no real traffic rule here. They can just kind of do whatever they want. What I like to do and what I would prefer to do with the traffic manager mod, but what we can do in vanilla is add a stop sign on the road that's not going all the way through. When there's a T junction here, so you've got the three roads coming into one, I put the stop sign on the road that is not going all the way through. And that way these guys have to essentially give way to these guys. So let's do that here as well. Zoom in a little bit, press the traffic light, press the stop sign. Now little road gives way to big road. You can see I have already done this for a lot of the city. It is most important on these main roads for sure. Turn those off, turn that on. You could even do it on these wee roads depending on how busy the traffic gets. I will say, just keep in mind how to do this. I'm gonna segue back to it in T minus three to six minutes approximately, probably less. The second of only two traffic tips that I am going to give is this big old confusing very strange concept called road hierarchy. It's a thing that a lot of people say, some of us understand, some of us kind of get it and just wing it from there. Here's how I will explain it in a video called City Skylines for Dummies. You have highways. Highways exist. They are the fastest means of transportation and most often they are getting people from outside of the city into the city. Zoom in, your highway comes into your city. The road leading from the highway is probably going to be one of your busiest roads because this is where everybody will be coming in and out of the city. And road hierarchy means that you start with your biggest roads having the most drivers on them and let's say the least distractions on them. 
So our main road to and from the highway here is this six lane road, three lanes on either side. And take note that there is absolutely nothing zoned on either side of it. There can be some small exceptions to this, but at it's very, very basic. The only purpose of this six lane road is to carry the vehicles from your highway entrance, main point of entry, through this six lane road onto the next road level down in the hierarchy, which is a two lane road typically. So this two lane road, you'll notice mostly is being used to have these wee roads come off of it, but there is some zoning, but certainly not a large amount of zoning. In a low density area like this, you can get away with this kind of zoning. As we move into the high density areas, I probably won't zone anything along these two lane roads. What I would probably put along them would be services like fire or police, because the main point of these larger two lane roads is to carry traffic from our big six lane road to the third step down, which is the wee two lane roads that go into like your suburbs or whatever small little areas you wanna call these. Of course, this is where you're doing most of your zoning is on these little roads. So road hierarchy again, from your highway entrance onto a main six lane road with essentially no zoning or buildings alongside it. That six lane road only brings people to the four lane roads, which can have some, but very little zoning on it. Service buildings are generally fine. These four lane roads bring people into the small, normal two lane roads where the vast majority of your zoning goes. Recalling from just minutes ago where I taught you about the stop signs and stop lights, it's important, if at all possible, to keep traffic moving on these big six lane roads especially, and also as much as possible on these four lane roads. So the way to keep traffic moving on this big six lane road is not to have stop lights on it that make people stop when there's no traffic anyways. Instead, if we look at info views, traffic routes, junctions, you can see what I've done. Anywhere where there's a four way intersection, I make the two smaller roads stop before they come into the intersection. And that leaves the big six lane road free to let anybody pass. Now I haven't done that here. This must have been a new road, newer road that I placed down. So that's how I will do it when it's a three way intersection. Now I'm noticing more places where I haven't done the traffic. So I'm gonna get this tidied up. If you have questions about any of this kind of pre-work or pre-explanation that I've done, please let me know in the comments below. But now let's get into growing our city. Hi, editor Tody here. It was at this time in editing that I realized if I kept all the remaining gameplay in the video, it would drag on and probably be over an hour and unpolished. So I'm going to give us a natural break here. Stay tuned and subscribe for the final part, part 3B, where we will actually reach the final milestone Megaopolis and finish this tutorial series. Thumbs up if the video taught you something and let me know in the comments below what your summer plans are. Take care everyone, I will catch you next time.